So we have a database, that's the starting point, and in this case seawoodatabase.mdb. Now you can have more than one database if you want, it might be useful if you've got separate clients or something like that where you want to have separate databases or distinctly separate areas within your own company, maybe staff's own personal equipment or something like that would go on its own separate database. Um, the only downside to having different databases is that it's difficult to transfer assets between different databases. It's doable, but it's, it's more difficult. Whereas if you've actually got all your stuff within one database, you can literally just drag and drop those things over and it all works. But in some cases, having separate databases, particularly if it's separate, distinctly separate entities like different companies or whatever, that can be quite useful. So the top level is effectively the database. Then within the database, the next level down is what we call the client. So we'll add a client in. So we simply just click on the database and then we click on add client. So we'll put the client name in. Now the client name is going to be Seaward. And I would normally fill in as much detail as I can about the client. Um, there's even a space there for any notes. But again, this does make the reports a little bit better when you, when you do that. But for our purposes today, I'll just put the name in there, Seaward. So that's the client. And then... Effectively, what we can do at that point is we've, we've got the client in there, we've got the, the database, and we've got the client. Now, the next level down below the client, and you'll see if I click on the various options there, is add a site. So what we would do then is add in a site into that client. So the site in this case is going to be Peter Lee. And again, I can fill in details if it's different from the, the actual client address. I'd simply just tick the box. I can put the details in. I can even put a picture in of the site if I want that helps me identify it um, later on. So we'll OK that. Whoops, site name is required. Let's try again. OK. So there we go. So we can't see it at the moment, but if I just click on the little plus here, it expands out and we've actually got Seaward and then we've got the the actual um, site in there is Peter Lee. Now the next bit, the next step down in the in the, the structure um, is the location. So the location would normally be the individual room or area um, in which we'd actually be carrying out the portable appliance testing. So in this case, I'm just going to put this down as room one. Again, we can put details in there. We can take a picture of it. Just to refresh it, we just click on the plus, And again, we've got the, the individual room there. So we've very much got the, the process building up there. Now, we can, if we want to at that point, we can even add an asset in. Um, so we can actually add an asset from scratch. Now, you'd be glad to know you don't actually have to do all this for every room and learn site in, within your organization. Once you've added uh, a client in, what we can then do is do a download from the tester and once we've done a download from the portable appliance tester what we'll see then is that we actually get this menu populating itself so if we've actually put the site in as peter lee on the pat tester it will then if it doesn't see the peter lee site it will create the peter lee site on there and obviously if there's another site or there's room two, room three, room four on the pat tester, it will automatically create those as we go. So there's no need to spend ages actually populating pat guard with all your organizational structure on there. Basically set up your clients and then you can do your downloads as we go through from there. So that's the, the database structure effectively. And we can go through and set up our, like I say, set up our clients, our sites and our locations. It's very important when you do pat testing, when you start out, that you you decide how you're going to do your, your structure. Um, it's very much up to you how you use these layers. Sometimes people um, use locations in different ways. Maybe it's not a room, maybe it's a person, maybe it's a vehicle and all the tools on that vehicle. There's quite a few different options for using these things. Same with the site. In this case, we've just put Peter Lee, but that could very easily have been floor one, floor two, you know, uh, floor three. Uh, it could have been departments within an organization. So there's quite a few different options to how to use 
these to actually get your database set up how you want it. And generally, the better the structure you set in the first place and the better use of the different levels, the better your reports and the better levels of reporting that you can get. So it, it's worth putting a bit of time into just thinking about how to do that, that layout to start with, go from there. So now um, we're going to move on and we're going to have a look at um, actually doing a download.